I got interested in this, actually before I even met you, um, reading a paper, a human clinical trial, that uh, molecular hydrogen water uh, actually reduced oxidized LDL in human beings, and actually quite dramatically. And I went, wow, yeah. now, that's pretty cool. Um, and so what you're saying is, the, the, at least what we think is happening is, so this is activating the NERF pathway mm -hmm. in RF2, and having us produce more of our own intrinsic antioxidants, right? And just as an aside, there's another new paper uh, that was presented at the American Heart Association this past week that shows that LDL cholesterol has nothing to do with anything in terms of causing heart disease. It's actually the small, dense LDLs mm -hmm. that get oxidized. Oxidized small, dense LDLs. Exactly. That yeah. are, in fact, the troublemaker. And our whole shift of our research and our treatment should be to prevent oxidized LDL. And so, again, I'm intrigued because, wait a minute, I, I can drink a glass of water with hydrogen in it and lower my oxidized LDL. Yeah, that's the idea. I mean, there, there are several clinical studies that, that demonstrate, um, and some really powerful animal studies. In fact, one of them um, in a APOE protein knockout mice. So APOE protein is, is very important to um, basically get rid of the, the bad cholesterol, if you will. And if you don't have that protein, you're going to develop atherosclerosis very quickly, for sure. Well, in, in this animal study, the drinking of hydrogen-rich water to, like, totally prevented the development of atherosclerosis. And so that probably, you know, it tr was then translated into humans that uh, that might be paper you're talking about where they were drinking hydrogen water and you, yeah, you be able to see um, less oxidized LDL. Um, and, and also we see benefits like with the macrophages, because that's what happens in the, in the, when the LDL gets into the, the um, you know, in, into the intima, for Correct. example, and then the macrophages come and they get oxidized and just this cascade. And, that, and hydrogen gas, like we talked about, is the smallest molecule in the universe. So it has no problem getting in th th through the cell membranes to where it needs to go. And now it can help to, to mitigate that oxidation. So that's one area. But then there's inflammation. Because with macrophages, um, they're sending out cytokines. Those are pro-inflammatory cytokines. And that's going to all these other signalings. And, and it's going to cause all this, this problem. Well, hydrogen gas is another area that it really helps to suppress uh, um, or mitigate excessive inflammation. It can, if, for, for example, when TNF-alpha, it's a cytokine, yep. activates NFKB. Measured in all my patients. It, well, yeah, so when that gets high, that's going to activate this transcription factor NFKB. NFKB is going to just huge inflammatory marker. Well, molecular hydrogen can, can downregulate um, NFKB or NF-kappa-B. But, but anyways, when that's downregulated, um, you're going to have less inflammation. And so we see both on the areas of uh, antioxidation and the anti-inflammatory effects of hydrogen, that could help account for some of these observed benefits.